Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be talking about tax. So in this demonstration, I'm gonna be doing two versions. We have the French tack and then the chain tack. Now a tack is used in order to help keep your lining in place at the hemline. So if you take off, for example, your skirt, your lining remains inside the skirt and doesn't come up out of it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use these fabrics as my example in this demonstration for my pretend garment. So we're gonna pretend I'm making a skirt or something. We're looking at the inside of the garment. So this is going to be the main outer shell of my skirt, and then this is the lining. Again, we're looking at the inside, so we're looking at the right side of the lining, and if I was to lift this up, it's the wrong side of the garment. You can see that my seams are all lined up. Now usually the hem is a little bit shorter in the lining, but this is the example that you should be using when you create both of these tacks. I'm first gonna show you how to do the French tack. So with this one, you're going to roll up your lining so you can see your seam. We're just gonna pretend I'm doing this for the center back seam. So I'm going to take my needle, and my, I already have this threaded, so I just have a single layer thread with a knot here at the end. I'm gonna take my first stitch, I would say about a half inch from the top of my hem here. It doesn't, it's not really specific, I just like doing it sort of towards the bottom. And I'm going underneath my seam allowance right here, or my seam, so my knot's gonna be hidden on the back. I'm making sure that I'm not grabbing the main fabric because I don't wanna see my thread on the right side of my garment. So the knot's gonna be hidden on the back there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take another little tiny stitch just to kind of anchor this into place. All right, now this is rolled up. I'm just gonna roll it down. So I'm getting sort of a close spot in my lining and I'm gonna take another little stitch. You, want, you don't wanna take a big stitch because you want these to be fairly close together. So just a tiny stitch. And I'm not gonna pull this all the way through because you don't want your lining attached to your main fabric where it's gonna be super tight. You wanna give it some little breathing room. So you'll see, I'm gonna pull it, just keep my finger here, until I would say about five eighths of an inch. So there's my first stitch. Now I'm gonna come back and grab in the same area where my first stitch came out, again, making this as tiny as possible. And when I pull this through, keep your finger under there so that way you can make sure that the whole thing doesn't get pulled too tight. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the green fabric again and then go back and grab a little bit of the brown fabric again. So you're creating a thicker strand going across here. I went back and forth a total of four times. So you can see we have a decent sized strand here and now we're gonna continue with the next part. So you don't need to tie a knot, you're still using the same strand. Next, we're gonna be building a series of knots that are gonna go up the strands or the four strands, keeping them all together. And you can see I've already started down here. So I've already started this process. You're gonna take your thread at the bottom here or at the base, you're gonna pick a side, either right or left. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent and you're always going that same way. I'm gonna go right because it's more comfortable for me. And you're gonna take this strand, you're gonna bring your needle up and over to the opposite side. So here's my needle right here and you can see my thread is kind of going around it. I'm still holding this in my right hand. I'm going under all four strands of the thread and then I'm coming up so it's going over this thread here. So you're kind of creating a loop. Then you're gonna slowly pull it so you don't get more knots than you need and you're gonna see it's gonna build right on top of that knot that's there on the bottom. So now I'm gonna do it again. So you can see here I'm holding it with my right hand. I'm bringing my needle over to the opposite side. So it's going under the strands and then over my right thread here, slowly pulling it, creating a knot on top. So this is all gonna get bound together by those knots. And I would say for this length, I typically get about 12 of them. Hold my right hand, my left hand brings the needle under and over this right loop, and then slowly pull it. 
So it's not hard, it's just a little time consuming. And you wanna pull it tight. You can see this one right here is a little bit loose. I might wanna pull it out and redo this one so it's nice and tight. And you'll get a really neat looking French tack that's not too sloppy. Once you get all your knots to your lining fabric, then you can go ahead and tie a knot. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the seam of my lining fabric, again, making sure that I'm not going through to my main fabric, because I don't wanna see it on the other side. You have your little loop here, you go through the loop and just tie a knot. And just to make it extra secure, I just like to do it twice Grab a little bit of the seam, bring my needle through the loop, tie a knot, and there we have a very delicate French tack that's gonna hold my lining to my main fabric at this point. Let's move on to the chain tack. Now I'm gonna thread my needle a little bit differently here. So I'm gonna take both ends, bring them together, tie a knot, so you kind of have a double strand on your needle and then we can continue making this. Like the French tack, I'm gonna be dealing with a seam and you don't really deal with the lining fabric till the end, so we could just fold this out of the way. And I'm gonna start right here. And again, I'm going underneath, coming up so that knot is going to be hidden. And then just to secure it, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of an extra stitch and just pull that all the way through. I'm gonna do that again, but this time I'm not going to pull all the way through. You're gonna create a loop with your thread. So I'm gonna grab this with my right hand. Again, it doesn't matter which side you start with, whether I grab this with my right hand or my left hand, it's whatever's most comfortable for you. All right, so it's with my right hand. I'm putting my fingers through the loop and then I'm holding the rest of the thread. Actually, you can let go of the needle if it's easier. So you're just holding the thread with your left hand or your right hand, whatever's easier. I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna go under the thread, I'm gonna pull it through the loop. My left hand is holding it tight as I'm pulling with my right hand. And you can see it's starting to create a knot here at the bottom, at the base. And I have a loop again, so here's my loop. I'm gonna put my fingers through it. I'm gonna put my finger underneath the strand, pull it through the loop, pull it tight, and you create another knot. And these knots are gonna be building right on top of each other. So this is why it's called a chain tack, because you're creating a chain of knots, and it's just gonna get longer and longer, and that's gonna be your tack. So again, fingers through the loop, grabbing underneath the strand of my left hand, pulling it through the loop, and just keep doing this. And you'll see you can do it pretty quickly. And again, I would make this about five eighths of an inch in length. All right, so about right there. Now when I decide it's long enough, you're gonna pick up your needle again, you're gonna put it through the loop, just pull it all the way through, and that creates a knot. So there it is, I'm gonna roll down the lining fabric again, decide where's gonna be a good placement. So I'll say right about here. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the fabric. Again, making sure it's not gonna show on that right side. Pull it all the way through. I'm gonna do another little grab of that fabric. And then I'm gonna go through the loop to create a knot. And I always like doing it twice because I will really wanna make sure that it's not going to come apart. And that's it. Here we can compare the two tacks. French tack, chain tack. Now, in relation to each other, I feel the chain tack is definitely faster to do and who doesn't like fast, but I do feel like the French tack is a little bit stronger. It's really up to you and what your preference is. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials. 
including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.